Let's find ways to work together to empower people, help people rise, particularly those who are starting to nothing. What would you say is the difference between a wealthy or rich mindset versus a poor mindset? Is it a way of thinking? Is it a way of acting and being and doing? What's the difference between rich mindset and poor mindset? I, I mean, in an ideal world, it would be those that are wealthy got wealthy because they did a tremendous job of helping, helping others. You invented a cure for cancer. I mean, you say, well, we don't want anybody to be wealthy. Well, don't you want people to invent things and come up with ideas? Don't you want Thomas Edison to be successful, who invented all these things that make our lives better? What we don't want is people to get wealthy by rigging the system, by, by trying to limit innovation, limit competition, all those things that we see going on in our system, which is what, what we call cronyism and protectionism. That's what we're against all of it, even if it makes us money. We want a system, as I said, a system of equal rights and mutual benefit where people succeed by assisting each other. Yeah. And, and so ideally, that's the difference. But that potential is in everybody. So for many people today, it's because they were throwaway people. Mm. No one believed in them. With this top down, okay, we're going to tell you, we're going to come in and tell you how to live your life and we'll give you money and you'll be all right. So your poverty will be less painful. Mm. Where, where's our job? If you empower people, everybody can get out of poverty because everybody can contribute. So how do we find a way to help people contribute. And we've done this, my wife and I started an organization here in Wichita called Youth Entrepreneurs 30 years ago. It was in one, one school here in Wichita that was in a poor area. I mean, and these kids, well, I'll tell you a story of, of one named April. This was after we had been doing just a few years. And well, let me tell you this, the program here is what we call three-dimensional education. That is, it's hands-on, it isn't just classroom, it's doing, and it starts with helping them find their gift, turning it into value skills, and then use it to succeed by contributing. And, and, they, and they start, a, we help them start their own small business. And then the ones that have the best business plan then we give them some seed capital, not a lot, maybe a thousand dollars or even a few hundred. So they can start and they start doing it. And, and so the, then the top performers speak at graduation and this, this girl, April, I'll never forget her talk. She said, I grew up in a terrible area. My mother was an addict. Uh, my, my brother was, had been shot. My sister was in prison. And I thought it was hopeless. So I was failing everything in, in high school. And she said, and then I heard about this class where I could get some money. She said, well, I'd like to get some money. And she said, I got in there and I found, wow, I've got to have a winning business plan and a successful business. Wow. So uh, I've got to to learn to read and write and present. So I better start doing that. And then if I have a business, I got to do math mm. to know what's working and what's not. And then if I got to, if I want customers and employees, I've got to learn to treat them with respect. So she said it changed my whole life. And I went from failing everything to getting straight A's. Wow. And then she got a scholarship to college and, and I've kind of lost track of her, but she had a successful business of her own. So that's, we, that we see that story. I could tell you dozens of stories yeah. like that. So that's the difference. These people who grow up in these, in these areas where they have bad educational system, a bad criminal justice system, all other problems, people in the community hurting each other, drive-by shootings and stuff. So they're, they're, everybody's scared. Uh, so they join gangs out of self-defense. I mean, we've got to help them. We have to have, and we do, we have social entrepreneurs yeah. working this that are transforming lives. 
as a former athlete, I'm a big fan of visualization of seeing the results I want to create on the football field and the basketball court in the future. But I've always been a big fan of visualization every morning, thinking about what, what do I want to create for the day? How do I want to show up when something happens? How do I want to respond and react? And for me, I find that visualization has been really powerful for my life. Is this something that you do in business relationship or deal making when you're about to negotiate a deal? Do you visualize the outcome? How is that in your life? If it's Yeah, there? but I, I don't, not with, not, I mean, in, in, in football, it'd be the image or, or like a chess player mm-hmm. visualize, okay, the moves 10 down. What if it does the, yeah. my does this? So that's a different, I don't have that, but I have one for, okay, what are the principles involved here? What are the concepts? And okay, what do we need to do to apply those concepts, apply these principles? And we, because we find when we violate these basic principles of, of human progress, we fail. Mm. We, we don't think we're doing it because we're going through the motions and we're using the right words and all stuff, but we're not really doing it. And mm. so that's, we need constantly have these checks. And, and why we need this challenge, continual challenge culture from everybody. And so, it, like, if you're a supervisor here and your people aren't challenging you, we'll go I'll help you. Now, you're, you're not getting their knowledge, so you cannot succeed if you're only using your knowledge. Those people out there doing the work see waste and see better ways that, that I, do, I will never see. And right. even you as their immediate supervisor won't see. I mean, the thing to visualize is how do we better empower our people? Mm. So they come up with answers rather than me. And so those are the things I think about. When you were in your you know late 20s and 30s, did you ever dream or imagine that this is where your life would be now and this is where your business and uh, visions and, and uh, nonprofits would be at? Is that something, was that ever a dream or were you oh, just like, oh, I no, hope you just make some money and have a good family? And that's, that's why I say this philosophy, these concepts have enabled me to achieve more than I ever dreamed and totally transform my life. And it's, and we raised our children with this philosophy, which I, I, I talk about in the book. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this is so powerful. And then to, to have the, the luxury of seeing what it's done for so many other people's lives is yeah. just, I mean, as you can tell, I'm pumped up about yeah. it. Yeah. How do you, you, you talked about your kids. I know you have a great relationship with them. How do you not, for all the parents listening and watching who have generated some, some success or some financial abundance in their life, how do you not screw up your kids when you have wealth? How do you keep them humble and grounded and hardworking and committed to growth and self-actualization when they essentially have everything at their fingertips if they wanted it? Well, uh, I mean, I learned that lesson from my father. He exemplified integrity, humility, Mm -hmm. treating others with respect, hard work, lifelong learner. Like he would say things like, son, learn everything you can. You never know when it'll come in handy. Mm -hmm. And on every one of these uh, issues, he would, he would talk about, and he would do it. I mean, he worked all the time, just like I do. And he, boy, when we didn't treat somebody with respect or like we were waiting in line for a movie together and we'd say, okay, there, it's kind of crooked here. Maybe we can move up. Hmm. Well, he would come and grab us. You go back to the end of the line. Wow. I mean, he was a bear and you, if you bragged about anything, well, you would get smacked down. And if you talk bad about any person, oh man, I got the belt a few times. <laughs> so he was pretty disciplined. So, so we, I mean, we weren't, we weren't as tough on our kids, but we talked about this every day. For example, the school had, had the kind of the five values, love, courage, faith, honor, and loyalty. So every night at dinner, I would have each one to, to, they could, you could pick any one of these five and, and then you would, uh, you, you need to tell me how you exemplified that with a specific example. And at first they were fresh, they'd cry. This was starting in the first grade. <laughs> and so that was a little intimidating, but 
after they got into it, it's just like with our employees. Okay, you go help others succeed. You go create value for others. And, and obviously our best customers are those who reciprocate and who reward us for it. So that changed them. And then every Sunday evening, I would take them in my library and play a tape for like 10 minutes, whether it's Maslow, Aristotle, wow. Hayek, all, all across all these disciplines that I had learned. I had tapes on them and play it for about 10 minutes. And I knew that was their attention span, yeah. <laughs> Max. And so then we'd just have a discussion. And my daughter picked up on it. I mean, she was eager. She was doing it. My son was, he was more like me. He was. <laughs> Let me go play, dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got important things to do. But then he's gotten it and he, and now because of this and this business of, uh, of finding your gift and then developing it and using it to help, but boy, they are both doing that. Like my son has, uh, has started a business here uh, called Coke Disruptive Technologies. And he's now has investments in 10 companies. And we do that through the philosophy of mutual benefit because mm -hmm. there's all this money rushing in for hot technologies, but we're a preferred partner because we say we have all these businesses and, and some of them it would be a good pilot area where you can apply it. And then our people will work with you to show you how to make it work better because they'll be the ones applying it. And that's what we call Coke Labs. So our whole, our, all our businesses, we look at laboratories, Coke, Coke Labs. And then in Stand Together, he's, he's built these relationships with all these technology uh, entrepreneurs. And so now they're working with us on Stand Together because they've made money and they want to have meaning in their lives so we can help them find what they're passionate about and where they can make the biggest contribution. Wow. Yeah. So he's done that way beyond what I could at his age. And then our daughter, well, she, she was frustrated for a long time. Like I was couldn't <laughs> find her way. Now she, she started an organization called unlikely collaborators and they get together and she finds people who, who are frustrated about something, have a hang up, maybe they're bitter. So they go through these sessions. Well, she starts it with telling about all her problems and her failures. Mm -hmm. And of course, then that opens them up and they talk about it. And she's totally dedicated to helping people. And she's working with us. She's helping show us how, how, how what she's learned how, on, on helping people in ways that we haven't used. I'm curious about your non-negotiables on a daily basis. Do you have a list or things that are non-negotiable that you do? Maybe it's you get up at a certain time or you always take a walk or you eat a certain way. Is there anything like that you do or you always give your wife a hug and a kiss? Is there something you always do, non-negotiable? Yeah, I work my mind and body every day. Hmm. Every day I'm going to learn something that I will help me contribute. I'm going to find a way to contribute. And I'm going to work out because mm. I've got to stay in shape to do all the things I'm doing. Yeah. That, so those are, those are my primaries and that's what keeps me alive. What do you, what do you feel is missing in your life? The ability to move our society better in a direction of equal rights and mutual benefit where people assist each other because it's gotten so divided mm. and these ad hominem attacks and, and no one talking about, as we said, about, okay, let's find ways to work together to empower people, help people rise, particularly those who are starting to nothing rather than like an occupational licensure. Okay, well, all the business people in the community get together. We're going to make these rules so tough that these people starting out can't compete with us. I mean, that's monstrous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one of our, our key issues. We got to get rid of these regulations like that, that these protectionist cronyist regulations that keep people back and slow down innovation, undermine competition, undermine opportunity. Yeah, that's yeah, it's, it's hard to hard to overcome all that and hard to make it all happen in a powerful way. Yeah. So what? that that's my biggest frustration. I'd like to 
wave a wand and bring it on. <laughs> figure I'm, that out. Yeah. I'm not a utopian. I mean, we'll never be perfect. Yeah. If we move 10% in that direction, like re reading history, this, this would make a massive change, mm -hmm. just 10% improvement in those principles of human progress. Yeah. And I'm curious, what do you think is the biggest fear you've had to overcome in the last 40 years? And what is the greatest fear you still face today? Well, my, my fear is always that uh, tomorrow I won't be able to contribute. Mm. I, I lose my, which I mean, as you get older, you, you lose some of your capacities and then I'll lose it and I won't be able to contribute because then I might as well, you might as well just throw me in the ditch and, and cover me up. How do you manage that fear? Well, I, the way I manage it is every day contribute. Yeah. And if I contribute and I'm, I can still offer something to help and I'm still making a difference, then, okay, I'm good to go. Yeah. Now I got to, now I got to work on how I do that tomorrow and maybe next year, God nice. willing. If you want to learn how to make more money and master money in your life, then check out this video right here. Whether it's a house or investments, my point to you guys is take your money seriously. <clears throat> Once you take your money seriously and you put some time in it, whether it's this book or wherever you want to get your information, you're going to be better off for it. You don't want to delegate this to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand it.